smell dust and old paper. You feel cold as if you're in a very, in a larger area and that the stone beneath your feet is very cold. And you have this feeling of dread around you. As if there is danger on all sides. And as you open your eyes, we see an inner hallway of Tom's castle, this sort of dark bluish stone, very uh, dimly lit hallways with these torches. But you see as the camera turns around to the hallway behind us, you see that there's these various things, there's runes on the floor that sort of light up and then, uh, and then sort of dim back down. There are statues that you can see some of their heads moving left and right. Uh, there's like floating spells going around. There's a fog ever present on the floor. And from some of the shadows, you see a little bit of shadowy tendrils and tentacles going in and then coming back out. All of these defenses and traps inside of the castle, but none of them disturbed. For as the camera turns around, we see our four heroes, and we know that they are, for all intents and purposes, invisible to these spells, to these traps, because around all four of their necks, there's these little tiny, very simple amulets that were given to them by this entity in the labyrinth for completing it. And it's a very simple little string, a uh, little uh, circular wooden uh, uh, little pendant that has a spiral on it. Uh, but we know that that is a sort of protection against these traps and spells. And as the camera turns around to where they are facing, they have reached a fork in the road. And we know to the right there are stairs leading up to where they believe that the spell wheel room is. And then to the left is a very short hallway that reaches large doors, which they believe that is where uh, Tom's mirror to be behind these doors. As the camera finally encircles back to fully encompass our four heroes. Well, listen, this is it. Uh, it's It's been a long, long two years, and we prepared for this every way that we can. And yes, they pressed our hand. Tom is moving faster than we thought, but this is where it happens. This isn't the last time we're all going to see each other. This is we are right now. We're going to get through the other side of this. We can beat Tom. I know it. Just, if we can stay in communication somehow, we're going to be farther than we'd like to be, but we need to make sure that if something goes wrong, it, if the magic wheel gets targeted by Tom before we can get to him, we need a way that we can all meet up. If um, if if things start going really sideways for for you and Vetra, I'll I'll know. And when he kind of makes a fist, and we can see that iron ring around her finger that's on the same finger it is on Vetra's hand. And if if um if, if stuff starts going bad for me and Theo, I, I can send a message, but I, I plan to get out before anything goes too bad. Okay. That distraction's going to be somewhere too. I don't know if Helene's going to go through with it, but she's definitely going after Tom first, meaning that most likely me and Vetra will see her before the two of you will. But if she tries something with the tower to distract Tom, odds are the two of you will run into it. I just... I wish we had talked more. <laughs> I wish we had spent two years with each other and not trapped and lost. It's over now, but God, this really might be it. You said something the other day, Bill, um, or maybe it was a few hours ago, I don't know. <laughs> but you said that maybe we could just watch the stars fall together. And if you guys, if you change your minds right now, I, I would walk out with you and I would watch the stars fall with you, but we didn't go through all of that to give up now. We could. <laughs> I want to keep the stars in the sky because you're, 
you're the family that I've been searching for for my entire life. All of you should come when this is over. You should all come with me back to Almhearth. I'll show you the best thatched roof in this whole continent. <laughs> There's no better view of the stars. Okay. Sure. Get to us as soon as you can, okay? Yeah. Won't be long. I think that Dull walks up to Theo and reaches down and touches to the the tooth uh, about the necklace that they've sort of formed for each other uh, and leans dramatically uh, because of the size difference. And listen, I would be, I would be so upset if you died before me. Just would be so unfair. Well, you're not allowed to say that to me. I have never been one for following the rules. Just please stay safe. Stay behind the golden, beautiful woman over there that will keep you safe. Dull. Yeah. When I'm gone, will you carry my bones? Everywhere I go, I will carry you. Hopefully you won't need to. I don't think Vetra will let us lose, so... I don't think so either. But that's why we're doing it, right? It's not just the fate of the world and the fate of all of this. It's a chance to get a little more time. And if all of you, you in particular, were willing to let the stars come down for a little bit more time with me, then tell me why is my life not a fair trade for that? If the need must be. I don't think that I would trade anything for you. Or for any of you. When I met you all, I, I didn't have anything outside of a cold heart. And... I was not given this title. I, I earned it with all of you. And there is no better feeling than knowing how capable all of you are to put my trust completely in the rest of you. How many people can say they stop the stars from falling with their best friends? I think it's a little early to be saying that, but God, do I agree. Let's go make sure that statement's true then. Let's, 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 yes, yes, okay. And you hear mm -hmm. a little, a little bubbling in, in agreement. <laughs> and you see, uh, you see Nancy Wood, the little <laughs> tiny red no. hunting slime that everyone remembers from episode uh, two, chapter buddy. one. I uh, thought I left you at South Mall. <laughs> <laughs> they agree. It did uh, not at all take watching the premiere again to remember you exist. <laughs> <laughs> it agrees and then goes into your backpack. So unless... If there's anything else you'd like to say, I would say you probably split off. As Winnie and Theo like disappear up the stairs, 
Ventura just looks at Dolph. You ready? No. Me neither. And Vetra takes off the ring. What are you... Vetra, what are you doing? My job. Protecting. Let's go. You know know she'll never go for this. (laughs) By the time she figures it out, it's going to be done. She's going to hunt us in the afterlife. (laughs) Probably. Fine. But she doesn't need this distraction. What if what if what if they're so close to taking care of the spell wheel and I get hit with something? Listen, you once told me that you did not trust any manipulators. That you'd cut my silver tongue out of my mouth and that you and I would never truly know each other. I'm here to tell you that I trust you. And if the ring must come off, it must come off. But now you have no excuses for whatever fucked up shit I do in there. Fair. And I, I put the ring around my my necklace. And I would say that you all go towards the, the door as you all, as a Winnie and Theo go up the steps, the veteran doll go towards the door. And before you reach the door, we do uh, a flashback uh, uh, back to the planning and other things in preparation for this moment. Because as all of the viewers remember, uh, last time it ended with you all on a hill outside of Thanes, the capital. Where you could see all this stuff uh, and i would say we flash back to one of the preparation moments we open up on the screen uh we see a bunch of soldiers and uh, uh griffins and uh other uh, s- uh mix match of folks uh gathering outside of south ma manor where we can see as the camera is descending down you can see that half of the city looks almost empty and you can see uh, far off it's very there's a fog everywhere it's very overcast there is an, an oppressive atmosphere on the city there's a, a lightning and thunder in the clouds above and on the sea you see this fog and what looks to be something like a, a, a battalion sort of standing on the sea itself as it is quieted uh, underneath their feet of fog and you see just like hundreds of those knights of the, the keepers of the veil, uh, those sort of death knight things. Um, but as the camera zooms into the manor, we see, we interrupt the middle of planning, uh, uh, the, the heroes uh, in their planning, letting everyone else know uh, what is happening. People that you see that are there, you see Stuart Buckland, which was uh, Edward Kanan's sort of right right hand man. Uh, you see Mortimer, your uh, sort of spirit servant in Southma. You see Captain Ulrich Steins, which was the guy from the first chapter that you all agreed to make a Knight of Numeria. I don't know if you did that. Maybe you did. Uh, he's there. Uh, you see uh, uh, Dylan, uh, the guard uh, from the first chapter. Uh, you also see uh, uh, <laughs> Nancy Lockwood is there talking about his new book um and uh, a couple of other folks as well and you see in the corner there is a wild old man uh with a chicken on his head that is talking about uh, some sort of business oh, um uh, there and there's also a uh, lion's guard which is like the people that the knights of maria have trained there's the marian soldiers and there's the griffin battalion a lot a lot of people did any um because I know one thing we discussed is maybe Dull reaching out to the remnants of the heroes who had attended meetings in the past, the mm-hmm. people that could be vouched for. Did any of them come in attendance as well? Um, I think you spoke to a dwarven hero. Uh, so I do not remember any of their voices, but they are here. Let's say that there's uh, there's like one or two heroes. Okay. The so last we... of the sort of 13 are here. Um, and they're just like, like, oh, what do we do now? And there's a lot of commotion, and then someone is going to step up and let everyone know the plan. Uh, I think that uh, Dull steps up 
onto one of the tables in the war room um, to get the clearest view of everyone uh, and to, you know, quiet the voices within um, and eventually hopefully gets their attention uh, and speaks out. Um, Listen, the situation is grave. We would not have asked all of you here uh, to begin with if we did not have the intention of sacrificing everything that we have to save the day. Uh, anyone familiar with old fables have an understanding that when the natural world is sacrificed, uh, when death is challenged, when uh, the things that make up the fabric of our universe is tested, then, then we break apart. That is what we're fighting today. We are fighting against the very seams of our universe coming apart. And you have been chosen to be a part of that legacy, to be a part of that fight. This is bigger than the war. This is bigger than the heroes. This is bigger than you and I. This is a fight for what makes us human, what makes us alive, for a world to continue turning. We must die. And for someone to decide they are bigger than death is a travesty larger than any of us can speak to. And that's why the Knights of Nemeria have decided to go inside of the tower and confront Tom directly for his crimes and the corruption of the heroes within. But there is a pressing issue outside of the tower itself. The revenants on the coast, I'm sure you've seen them. There's no guarantee that they will allow us enough time to take Tom. And there's no guarantee that Tom does not have a backup plan for a marching army himself. It is important that all of you take the ground floor and surrounding the tower. The Griffin battalions must be at the highest point to assist in case the magic wheel is confronted and, and there is an issue there within. And for the rest of you, it will be the ground floor, the surrounding areas, the battlefields that you will be in charge of, keeping back the revenants and whatever Tom might put at our bay. The rest is up to us inside of the tower. We are I open- I think I step up. I step up beside Dolan, kind of like put a hand on his forearm for a moment. And I just turn to everybody and I'm just looking at them with kind of like blank faces. And you say a lot of them look uh, pretty scared. Uh, also, uh, going into the city, when you first, as you rounded up everyone, you've learned that half of the city has disappeared. Very similar to what happened in the very first village that you visited. I just look out to them for a moment and then... In Tormorgain, when you're in training to be a warrior, you're taught to ask yourself one question before a battle, before a brawl, before a war, whatever size. You make sure you ask, what are my odds? The heroes got into the habit of thinking that they know best and they think that they get to decide what sacrifices are necessary to get what they need. That's not how the Knights of Nemeria operate. I'm not gonna lie to you about your odds and I'm not gonna tell you that this won't be the most dangerous thing you will ever do. You might die. I'm, I'm not up here to comfort you and I'm not up here to lie to you. We don't have a choice. And I, I'm still like holding Dole's forearm and I just look over at him. This is our fight. This is our responsibility. You have a choice. And if you will stand with us, we need exactly what Dole has said. We need people on the ground. We need people going inside. But I need you to know that going inside is far more dangerous than being on the ground. We're not forcing you. It's important to me and it's important to us that if you go inside, you know what you're going into. For whatever Tom throws at us, we don't know. We don't know what it's going to be. And if you can't, if this is too much, 
Just go be with the people that you love. I think we'd all kill for a little more time. Vetra Vikander, voice of Tormorgain, voice of her people. I'd say the uh, the Lion's Guard look uh, extra proud in this moment. They stand, uh, they stand taller, and you see Steward Buckland uh, starts to go around uh, and talk to uh, sort of like his commanders and letting them know. You hear uh, get word that he's telling them that anyone who is like the last of their name, they can go. Um, and also there's no desertion uh, killing uh, rules in place right now. Uh, you see probably about a fifth of the people leave, um, but a lot more stay. Um, uh, and you do see uh, Nancy uh, Lockwood is like, he's like, like, what a wonderful story. I. I'll, I'll tell it from far away. And um, he, he leaves. Um, uh, and you see Bisk, you're like, give me six gold and I'll go in. Um, and uh, uh, he's just sort of like rambling in the corner about like, uh, about oh, there's a candle. It's going to come out. You got to put out the candle. It's big old big problems. A lot of stuff. It's, yeah, I did tell you a lot of things. Uh, it's just kind of like going on. And some guards just like, uh-huh. Uh, just sort of nodding at him. What about Dylan? Oh, Dylan comes up. And he's like, "All right." Uh, so, um, uh, some Theo speech hides here. immediately. Uh, some <laughs> speech here. I got to say, uh, it seems like an awful nasty business that we got ourselves into, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, look, uh, you can count on me. I'll be there. Uh, don't know. Don't have. Uh, don't have much smarts, but I mean, I'm all for make up for it in muscle, you know what I mean? Of course, Dylan. You are the best of us. I mean, that is what they say. I mean, after that promotion, after all those years ago, I've been mean, honestly doing pretty well. Uh, I do hope that Theophany is still not uh, uh, hung up on me. I mean, we both moved on. Distraught. And I'm pretty sure, so, uh, uh, Theo is just distraught. Gotta move on with her life. Of course, Anyways. They cry every night. They are inconsolable. Yeah, too bad. Well, hopefully I can get over it now. Um, so anyway, so I'm, uh, I'll be wherever you need me to. Um, actually, you know what? It seems like he's wearing this sort of like feathered armor. It looks like he might be the uh, the captain of the Griffin Battalion. Uh, now he's like, all right, man, let's go saddle up. Make sure you fed those Griffins, eh? And uh, it sort of walks off. Thank you. As the camera pans around and we see some people look emboldened and others leave and this silly interaction, uh, the camera, when it spins back around to Vetra, we see that Winnie is standing just kind of right behind her and no one in the room looks more proud. And when he's just standing close, very quietly with a gentle hand on Vetra's forearm. Uh, I'd also say that, um, mm, you all feel that, though you've given the speech, you've already said it, there is a very big chance that anyone that stays will not be coming back. So you can decide to ask people to stay or ask people to go. If you ask them to stay, they will, they will there's a large chance that they could die. Also, this is probably the last chance you're going to get to say anything to anyone, if you want. In my opinion, I think it is their choice. I will not ask anyone to stay or go. Okay. I agree. I, I'm of the same mind. I believe that it's up to us to be in that tower, but anyone else is there of their own accord. Okay, you know what? I'm actually going to roll a d6 for each of the uh, NPCs. Don't tell us. Question yeah, mark? yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, yeah. No. I don't need that. It's gonna hurt me. So Winnie has spent the last bit of time looking through the last of her books, trying to see if there's anything that could be helpful. Still racking her brain, what to do about Theo, what to do about contacting the keepers of the veil to talk to them, what to do about what to do about Tom, 
and she has a couple of ideas and Winnie ends up kind of a book in one hand absentmindedly flipping through pages and then she goes out to the grave that's kind of behind the Southmaw Manor and I believe it's a part of the Sir Davith Vikander Memorial Gardens and Winnie's here to pick up a couple of specific spell components uh, that she needs for to try to give something a shot in a little bit so i think that's that's what she's doing is she's poking around some of the graves trying to find just the right thing uh to cast a spell oh i'm uh theo i i don't know why i didn't expect to find you out here but how are you holding theo, up theo pokes her head from around the gravestone and it's kind of doesn't quite wave but puts her hand up What are you looking for, in particular? I was hoping for maybe um, uh, ichor from a very old or powerful set of bones, and then maybe some lacken from a, a gravestone. You look over and you see that Theo is sitting, her arms wrapped around her knees as she tends to do, and she's thinking, and you see that she's at Vetra's father's grave, and she says, I was thinking about that too. I don't know about old bones, we haven't really moved any here, but powerful bones I think we could, I think we could do. You're the expert, honestly, what, whatever, whatever you think will work, I'm good with. I, I know, um, I know I've poked fun at you in the past, been kind of cool. Um, when, when you do your magic, when, when you talk about your bones, I'm, I'm sorry about that. What, what you do is incredible. It really is. You are, you are mean to me? I'm not proud, but yeah. I when think I, 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 I didn't even notice. That's a part of your magic. You are exactly what you are, and Theo, you are perfect. Now, oh. I guess, do you need help? No, this is kind of a thing that's easier for me to do alone. It's a little bit different than the other magic that you've seen me do. And Winnie, as you watch, you you see that Theo at Davos' grave with her dagger starts digging, but very carefully, like very gently, very tenderly, to the point where this sort of act almost feels sacred to her. And you know that you've seen her use her magic to talk to people who have died, but you've never seen her actually do what she likes to do, which is dig up bones so that they can be remembered and you watch her do this and you see how carefully she pulls them from the earth and cleans them off and takes them to the fountain and washes them clean so that they're white and they're they look new and in in front of you she doesn't ask you to turn around she will pull out the dagger and very very gently whispering to her to herself or to the bones you don't really know which you see her pull out that dagger and very quietly score the bone and cut into it but it's a very gentle sort of action it's not um, something that she's doing rushed it doesn't matter that she's in a hurry she's so careful with every movement of her hands with every movement of the dagger you don't know what she's saying but you get the feeling that she's talking to the bones or trying to and eventually she finds the ichor in the, the middle of the bone and the marrow and she removes it and gives it to you and she cuts a little bit of moss that's been growing on Davith's grave and hands it to you and uh, she looks at you very carefully and says I I don't really feel very special except when I get to do this but 
the thing is, I haven't done as much of it lately because the pawns don't really speak to me the way that they used to. They were my friends, my first friends, really. And I kind of wonder now if they don't talk to me the way that they used to because I have other people that I get to talk to now. I, I don't know, but... Um, I need you, you specifically, to make me a bunch of promises, Winnie, and you, you don't get to ask what they are before you agree to do it. You know, I, I like games, and this seems like an interesting one, but honestly, it's easy to say yes to you. Sure. Why not? First, if I don't make it back, if my heart gives out, would you keep these bones for me? You always seemed interested in my magic and what they can do, and... I want somebody to keep their stories alive. Maybe there's a little bit of magic left in them they can whisper to you. I don't think it's going to come to that, but all right. And, oh, you know, you're supposed to, you're supposed to agree to all of it before. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, um, then. The second is um, you have to get Vetra far away from here and make her very, very happy. I think I already have a couple plans in mind, so that one's easy. And the third thing is you've got to you've got to keep Dole out of politics. He's going to do it anyway, but you've got to at least try. I can promise to try. Okay, I think that's I think that's close enough. You you've got to. Can I have you promise me one more thing or one thing in exchange? Okay, but there's one more thing, but you can go first. Give me one more chance to, to, to remove this pallor Tom's put over you. Please. Only if you make me one more promise and you don't get to ask what it is. All right. You have to say it out loud, otherwise. I promise, whatever it is, even though I don't know what it is. If it doesn't work, you won't blame yourself. You know, I, I, um, I just, Theo, here's the thing. I just, I've, I've been thinking about it all morning and of, of course I failed the first time, the first couple times. It's, it's because I kept trying to do it all by myself. I kept ignoring the fact that, that you, Theo, you, you do your own magic. You do these incredible things. You have the ability to to lift people up and and to to make people feel special and and to to make them better than what they are. Theo, that's what you've done to all of us. That's that's what you've made us. You are our heart, and I I just I want to give you yours back, but I need your help. Cause I cannot do this alone. Mm -hmm. What do you need me to do? Help me believe in myself. Help me keep my mind sharp. And I need you to believe that your body is strong and that you will survive this. I need us both to believe in this. I can do that. Okay, um, do you have a favorite grave here? Theo looks around and points at the smallest grave in the graveyard. There's not a name on it. It's unmarked. Nobody knows who it is. It's just someone who had died in the interim two years and who was buried here. Just a, a stranger passing through town. But nobody knows them. Nobody remembers them. And that's the one that Theo spends the most time at. Winnie will reach out for Theo's hand and then guide her over to that grave. 
and kind of motion for both of them to take a seat, facing each other kind of on this grave. And this is where Winnie will begin to cast an elaborate version of Dispel Magic and closes her eyes and and just feels the warmth of the people around her who she loves. And for the first time since she was run out of town as a girl, she'll cast guidance on herself, drawing from that spirit of hope and community. So for the audience and for the players at the table, this is to remove this ninth level spell, which is basically a delayed power word kill. This is a DC 30 that you have to meet. If you do not meet the DC 30, there are four different levels of things that will happen if you do not succeed. I will tell you now, uh, the lower it gets, the worse it gets. I'll say right now, if you get a 15 or lower, the spell will trigger. So over the course of this conversation, Winnie casts guidance on herself for an extra D4. D4. Theo imparts a bardic inspiration onto Winnie for an extra D10. And then Theo casts a fourth level aid spell on themselves to put their maximum hit points at 101. Um, okay, all right. Um, for the spell, um, uh, for all of the folks out there that do not know what power word kill the spell is, is basically anyone that has, I think it's 99 or 100 uh, HP or lower, when the, cast, when the spell is cast, it instantly kills them if they have lower HP than that. So right now, Technically, Theo has 101 HP. Um, this was cast a while ago, so I'm still going to make you roll, but I'm going to lower the DC. I will lower it to a 25, is what you need to get um, to get this. I will say it's going to be one roll. Uh, oh, I mean, no, I mean do, do, you have, do you have advantage? Is anyone there granting you advantage on this? No? She doesn't need it. Okay. All right. So this is one roll. Uh, just to uh, clarify the math, you have a plus what right now with all of this okay. combined? So we are currently at... Winnie has a plus five to this check. Okay. Theo got a plus seven on the Bardic Inspiration. Then we have a plus two from Guidance. So we're at 14 plus a D20 roll of a 13, bringing us to a 27. I can only describe the first part because the first part is when he begins to cast Dispel Magic, we see the ambient magic of this area kind of become visible, at least to Winnie's eyes, these curtains of gold, these pockets of um, necrotic energy hovering over different graves and then we see a strong aura of divination coming from a portion of the manor and we see these other areas of magic and then we focus in on Theo and this tangle of horrible magic around her heart and when he begins to untangle it like a ball of thread like she's a kid making cotton twine for candles again and she begins to pluck it. And as she does, the strings begin to unravel and the knot loosens. I don't even think Theo realized just how tense her chest has felt since this happened to her. She's so used to feeling like parts of herself aren't working or are missing or are gone that to feel that unraveling as you, you pull these threads away from her, it feels like she's getting a full breath of air in in her lungs for the first time, possibly since she can remember, which is quite a few years at this point. And she kind of takes that deep breath, especially because there was certainly a part of her that was thinking this might not work. And if she had to go, this would be a 
fine way to do it. But realizing that she has time again, that the clock isn't ticking down every single second, just feels like that very tight, taut ball is starting to lessen. And the longer she sits there with Winnie holding her hand, the more easy that breathing gets. And Theo says, I, th I think it, I think it worked. Winnie, did it work? I think so, yeah. I would say oh. from onlookers on this scene, we see Vetra and Dole walking at walk outside and from your point of view you just see these golden uh fibers these tethers like joining theo and winnie together and just there's this small little tiny ball of golden light that it just ever expands and then it just ends in a little like almost like little sparkles when it's done and uh theo maybe you fall forward or fall backwards for a second catching yourself and I'll let Winnie catch me. You fall into Winnie. She catches you. And uh, oh. Vetra doll, you, you see her breathing. And Theo, you feel, that again, that release. But there is a little bit of a toll with it, regardless. You do feel a little bit of a pain, but you know that it is gone. Your hit point maximum is decreased by 10. It could have gone so much worse. As Theo kind of falls and collapses onto Winnie, she says, Oh, I, yeah, no, that, I feel a whole lot better. Like, a whole lot better. Oh, wow, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, um, how, how, Winnie, how much time do we have? We're like, before have the stars come down, like, how, how much time do you think that is? If you had to guess. Uh, maybe like three hours. Like okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go find Dole real quick. Um, oh no, there no, there he is. I'm not. We're not doing that in front of people. Never. Let's, just, let's go kill Tom. <laughs> smash cut to the tower. All right. So we smash cut back. <laughs> uh, love and uh, emotion You're and welcome. tenderness was had, Woo. and. Uh, Smash cut. We jump back to Tom's castle. We start with Winnie and Theo. So I think Winnie and Theo begin to walk up the steps. And it's taking a while. And are we still seeing traps everywhere? Yeah. I mean, they, they ignore you. You walk right past. Uh... You know what? We do not have time for this. And Winnie will immediately um, kind of pull at some threads, shoot them together in her hands, casting Locate Object. She is requesting the location of the spell wheel, or specifically, mm. the nearest spell wheel to her. You know that it is directly at the top of these stairs. Um, and I would say maybe you get to the top and there's a couple of other doors, but you, boom, right know the exact door, you open it, and this is what you see. As you walk into this door, there is blue, red light, blue, red light. And you see on the floor, this floor is entirely made out of see-through glass. And in the center of this giant circular room is a wall of flame and fire, a dome of flame. And it, it changes from blue flames to red flames every one second. Blue, red, blue red but you know in the center of that dome is the spell wheel and as you look down through the glass you can see a hundred feet below what seems to be the mirror room which we cut to now and we cut down to the mirror room and as the doors open with vetra and doll uh, how are you entering the room uh if doll allows it i would like to be immediately before him with my shield in front of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically when you open the door, what you see so that to better uh, give you guys uh, an idea of what's in here. Again, very big circular room, hundreds of mirrors, all different shapes and sizes, gilded, simple, exquisite, 
uh, mundane, all of these hundreds of mirrors that are all uh, around in each other in circles. It's sort of like outer circle, middle circle, inner, inner circle, all of these different mirrors. And draped on the ground, you see uh, someone covered in a cloak, a dark red uh, cloak with a little white trim, sort of like a king's cloak. And you see uh, maybe 20 or 30 uh, what looks like porcupine spikes, but you see them in the light of the blue, red, blue, red light that is in this room that is flickering from far up above, that they are actually swords stabbed into this person's back. And you see as they <sighs> turn around, this is none other than Edward Kanan, but something is wrong with him. You see his eyes are fully red. There is no iris. There is blood uh, fr uh, falling down from his tear ducts. His crown is shoved into the top of his head where there is blood uh, flowing down. That it, is, it has now been, uh, is no longer bleeding. It is sort of crusted over um, and blood coming out of his mouth. He looks deranged and he has a third arm coming out from underneath his other two. He seems bigger and he turns around and he says, be quiet. The dragons, they're coming. My friends are sleeping. We can't have the dragons come in here. And he looks straight at you, Vetra. But I charge him. Amazing. Doll, you see all of this uh, probably in a fraction of a second. Uh, what do you do as you're, this is all sort of like coming together? Because uh, you are quick. So you can go and hide, but you can't like attack or anything, but you can choose to go and do one thing. I'm going to cast at second level invisibility. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I think that the Widow's Bite climbs up from his wrist up onto his shoulder. And as soon as he sees this massive King Kanan, he knows he can't be seen by this. He's going to let Vetra take the brunt of it and see what he can do from behind. So uh, Widow's uh, Fang climbs up to his neck and bites in. And the second that he does, from the bite uh, impact across his body, begins to just completely disappear until he, you know, joins the ethereal plane and becomes completely invisible. Um, and I'm going to try and wheel about this room. Um, I'm just trying to get as much distance around this. Is it a dome-shaped room? We're in sort yes. of a circle? Uh, it's a circle-shaped -shape room. So basically, you cast this invisibility, step into the room. Kanan does not see you. Everyone is going to roll for initiative. Okay. You are both in the same rooms at the same time. All right, so the order of this combat um, and the things that are happening in the spell wheel room is first dull. Acts, acts first with a 24, then we have Winnie, then Kanan, then Vetra, then last with Theophilia. Dull. You are in this room, you are invisible. Uh, I will also remind you, in invisibility, if you, if you attack or cast a spell or do something, your invisibility will drop. I truly just want to survey the room uh, while Vetra is keeping King Kanan busy. I want to ensure that Tom is not here physically and see if maybe I can find Tom in one of the mirrors. If there's anything in this hint, uh, in this room that K uh, Kanan might be masquerading or, 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 you know, distracting us from. Amazing. Uh, give me a perception or an investigation uh, with advantage since you are specifically uh, looking for that type of stuff. Got it. Oh, uh, thank God for advantage. That was a two. Oh boy. Oh, natural 20 on the second one. Oh, um, hot dog. That's a 25 total, natural 20. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, with a nat 20, you learn a lot of stuff. So, as you're skulking around, uh, and then you see Kanan, uh, you see him pull two swords out of his back, and then a third sword with his other arm. He's, and he's just like charging as Vetra's charging at him. And you're looking at these mirrors, they all look fairly simple. I would say you touch one of the mirrors and you feel as if you were to push a little bit harder, you might, you feel like you could go into one. Um, you, with a nat 20, I would say maybe you throw a rock or you have a rock on your hand, you press it against the mirror, push it and it pops out in a different mirror. 
Uh, it looks like you are, could go through one and uh, travel to another mirror in the room. Uh, you learn that little bit of information. Um, and if, as you're looking at these mirrors, trying to discern which one is important, which one is important, you think, Tom is not stupid. You would not just leave a mirror out in the open and then you see a glint of something and you look at Kanan's back. Hidden amongst all of the other swords, there is a very strange looking sword. It seems as if it has is giving off some sort of shadow or something, but the glint of what it is actually made out of is glass. And you see that that is embedded into uh, Kanan's back. I want to... Uh, no, I'm going to do something dumb instead. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get as close to Kanan's back as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and is it possible to still hold an action, or would that be the end of my turn? You can 100% hold your action. I would uh, like to, at the most appropriate time, when he is fully focused on Vetra, I would like to stealthily, violently rip the mirrored sword from his back. 100% awesome. I would say on his turn when he is attacking, um, he you can uh, 100% do that. Okay. Perfect. Um, yeah. Uh, is that your turn? That's 100% my turn. I'm waiting for Vetra to get me a good enough in that I can pull Tom's mirror free from Kanan's back. Cool. Um, next is Winnie, but Kanan has a legendary action that he would like to do. <laughs> um... I would like Vetra and Dull to give me a dex save oh, of 17 oh, or more. Thank God. It's plus nine. So yeah, 19 total. I got exactly 17. So as Kanan is charging, he has these three swords out and he's getting closer. He's like, you Trixie dragons. I can see you coming. Ah! As he's charging forward and you see him sort of like flex his back and, ah! and all of the swords fly out of his back, flying across the room, spinning, breaking mirrors, uh, embedding themselves in the wall and on the floor. Dull, you see it coming and you dodge out of the way, just like sort of Matrix style. All of these blades fly and all of them miss you. Uh, one getting really close, giving you a little bit of a close shave. And uh, Vetra, you also see it coming, but one of them uh, sort of, uh, maybe they just bounce off of your shield and it's just like a lot of force and sort of bruising. Uh, you you take eight damage, uh, Vetra. Uh, so he shoots all of these swords out of his back and you see just a just bunch of just blood uh, falling uh, down his back. He's like, hey, I remember you, Dragon. Uh, we fought before, haven't we? As he's like uh, charging towards you still. And then we jump to Winnie. Winnie, a hundred feet up through the glass room, we see uh, you all standing at the precipice, the door to this room with the dome of flaming fire in the center of the room. Uh, you can give me an arcana. You have 25. To... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, actually uh, 26. Okay. So what would you like to know about this spell? Do you want to know how much damage it takes? Do you know what, want to know what it's doing? Uh, you can learn uh, one uh, big piece of information from it. How much damage does Winnie think she's going to take if she touches it directly? 5d8. One of these colors does not do damage. No, I think Winnie sees that things are starting to pop off down below and doesn't want to waste time. She's going to, I think, bear wolf forward, trying to go through this barrier of fire while it's in the blue state, which she's hoping is the not dangerous one. Okay. Uh, you're going to need to give me a deck save. Yeah. Uh, 20. Okay. 17 is not going to do it. Okay. Unfortunately, blue was the real fire. Cool. Uh, you take 26 fire damage. Winnie picked the bad color, and she will use a reaction to cast Absorb Elements to um, 
push away half of that damage and then the other half we see the golden shield kind of go up around her taking the rest of it so she looks unscathed as she walks nice. through this fire um theo you're gonna want to walk through what it's red and this is changing every second yeah every one second um great uh so yeah no uh now uh winnie you're inside of this fire dome and you see at the center of this is a small little ball of of light and it's has all of these different runes and spells and uh, tethers that sort of fade off into nothing just like hundreds of these little tiny complicated r little spells and everything all encompassed inside of this little ball of light and you know that that is a spell wheel which is the sort of connecting point the uh, hub of all of the defensive magic of this place Winnie walks forward and she places a hand on the spell wheel and mm -hmm. will cast identify. Okay, cool. Uh, do you have to roll anything for identify or is it just, just works? Nope. Uh, you choose an object. You must be able to touch it when you cast it. If it is a magic item, you learn its properties and how to use them, whether it requires attunement, how many charges, and you learn if there's any other spells affecting the item so in theory she learns the ins and outs of the spell wheel cool um so yeah you uh get to this uh you cast uh identify as you touch this uh you get a little glow in your eyes and you see all of the inner workings that all of these spells are connected to, to, to this point and you uh know that this is the where you can change spells alter them in different parts of the castle you know what traps are up uh, which ones are laying in wait, uh, what's keeping people out. You see all of those spells in this uh, spell wheel. Uh, you also know that uh, you need to be very, very careful with deactivating it um, because this is a lot of built up energy here and uh, it will not damage you, but the room that you're in could be damaged. You look down at the glass floor beneath uh you have to be very careful with dismantling this that is what you learn all right theo get in here <laughs> uh but first we move to canaan um and we see the king in this sort of uh blood frenzied uh rage uh charges up to vetra and is going to uh, go go a little go a little cray cray. Uh, what is your AC right now, Petra? It is uh, technically it's sixteen. I have my shield out. Okay. Unfortunately, he hit you all three times. Bring it on. Uh, he has a plus nine to hit. Thirty nine damage coming at you. Okay. Uh, from all three of these attacks. I feel like that shield, like putting the shield up and knocking the one that shot at me, like, like stopped my charge and kind of knocked me off guard. And then while, like before I could even look back, it was just three slices all, all of a sudden. Just, yeah, you, you sort of go to lower your shield, <laughs> just right over it, it just slices right past your head. And these other two, <laughs> you think about dragons, you just gotta get under their scales to their soft underbellies. We gotta take these scales off! <clears throat> and uh, he's just uh, slicing at you, uh, just, just, just mad. Um, and he's going to take another, he's gonna take his bonus action. Uh, I need you to give me a wisdom save. Uh, it's gonna I'm be so against, good at those. Yeah, it's gonna be against his roll. Uh, uh, you have to beat a 14. I got an 18. So after these slices and you sort of uh, move back, he sort of looks at you and his eyes glow even more red. <sighs> and this blood is coming down. He looks very, it's, you feel an aura of fear about to take hold. And then how do you push past that? Um, since my turn is next, can I say I rage? And that's, oh, hell yeah. that's how I push past it. Yeah, that, yeah, that is I, the I end close. of his turn. Yeah, I close my eyes and open them, and they're like that arcane blue color, and I just, like, yell back at him. <sighs> and now take your turn. Okay, now that I am raging, I am just gonna... 
I'm gonna like the same wild swings that he did, but like my feet are better placed. Like I, it looks like I'm swinging wildly, but I'm being very strategic about it. And I am slicing. I want to, if I can, slice directly at targeting one arm. I want okay, to try to remove yeah. one of his arms. Hell yeah. Uh, and I want to attack recklessly. 26 for the first one. Okay, that hits. And the second is an 18. Um, He parries that with a reaction. Okay, okay. So that first one is going to be uh, 12 points of... Nope, 10 points. 10 points of uh, slashing damage. Feet just placed strategically, slices once, get a good slice on one of the arms, and then I swing it around to try to swing at that exact spot again, but he brings the other one up and just parries it and kind of knocks my sword backwards, and I'm just still standing directly in front of him, staring him in the face. It's like, I know your tricks, dragon. You'll kill my friends. I think I just say, I'm sorry. He looks confused. Um, and actually with that, you get a brief vision. It seems to be a very, very long time ago before maybe, maybe during the ending of the war, the dragon war. And it's just a very simple scene. You see all the 13 heroes are at a tavern. Everyone looks younger and they're all laughing and having a wonderful time. And uh, you see King Kanan, before he was king, he's not wearing his crown there. And he is uh, laughing and uh, sort of like picking up two of the smaller heroes. Uh, actually, he picks up Vigo and Tom in either of his arms. And Vigo looks very awkward. Uh, it is not uh, having a good time. And Tom is actually smiling, though he uh, actually has color in his beard, uh, uh, like he uh, used to have. And you see, uh, you see Veridin, you see Davith and they're all having a wonderful time. They all seem very, very close. Some of them are like laying on each other. Uh, some of them are arm wrestling. They're having a very wonderful time and then it goes back to the current moment. And you see Kanan looks very confused and, and the red goes back into his eyes. Anything else you'd like to do on your turn? Nope. I think we just look confused together for a moment. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> then we move to Theo, all the way back up to the spell wheel room. Theo's feeling great, so she's going to try and time it and get through the flames that aren't going to do her damage. Um, so you're going to need to give me a dex save, um, but it will be a 16. It is just about timing and trying to jump through at the right time. 17. All right. We see, uh, what does this look like, Theo, where you just barely make it through? You know that thing that cats do where they're about to like jump up on something really high where they're like going back and forth? <laughs> she does that for a little bit before she just jumps through. Just in, like definitely assuming she's about to get, get her shit wrecked, but she jumps through. She kind of looks side to side. Okay. Okay, that worked. You are unscathed by the fire and in this middle you see uh, Winnie touching this uh, ball of light, uh, getting some sort of information. So if you'll allow it, when uh, Winnie begins casting Identify, uh, she just begins talking as quickly as she can. Um, after beckoning Theo, she just begins to say everything that she is learning as quickly as she can, um, just out loud partially so that she can process the information, but also to share with Theo. Mm -hmm. So how, how, how do we destroy it and how do I help, help do it? Um, can I, can I make you feel better, or should I, should I try and use thunder on it? The fetch is a little bit better than I am at that. I could try a bone. I don't, I, um, Winnie, what do I do? Uh, the, 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 um, the, the, the same thing you did to me at the grave, actually. I, I, I think that could help. Um, we, well, I, actually, you know what? Cast thunder on it. Cast thunder on it? Okay. Um, all right. Theo will will put her hands on it too, um, and look at Winnie and like her eyes are closed, like she's kind of got one eye that's cracked open. She says, "Okay, here goes something." Wait, I, I, um, just, uh, but hang on just a second. Mechanically, Winnie needs to wait until she gets her reaction back. Okay, 
Yeah. Fall speed, though, I don't... Do but if you'd be falling for an entire turn yeah. and you wouldn't hit yet... You do have... You Betcher's have a genius. Turn. Betcher, he... Like, I think Winnie <laughs> begins to stop Theo. I, I Wait, I just... I need to... Wait. You know what? Yeah. Do it. And she hears Betra's voice in her head, just saying, go for it. <laughs> go, okay. go, go, go. Absolutely. So uh, Theo attempts to use her magic. And Winnie, this is actually one of the spells that you taught her in the interim between um, when you all were talking and when you all weren't. One of the things that you taught her is you were training together because Theo was pretty desperate to learn magic that wasn't just reliant on her bones. And... Theo casts Thunderclap. For a second, it seems like nothing has happened. And Theo kind of opens her eyes and looks very apologetically at Winnie. But then you get that huge boom as the thunder happens. And you see Theo's eyes get very, very wide and everything shakes. So as this boom happens, uh, you see the spell wheel crack. And all at once, you all, everyone feels a this like huge sort of like wave of something retreating and just boom, everyone shakes uh throughout and uh though you're standing right there uh the thunderclap combined with this cracks the floor breaks theo did not know this was going to happen but when he did the, the flame wheel uh, the flame dome stops all of a sudden and you start to fall uh all right then we jump back to the top of the round with dull uh dull, ah. you just dodged these swords that have flown by and you feel this boom and glass is turning to rain down all around you from up above so can i go with that held action i had from before oh, and, and oh right right that? yeah uh, uh let's just have you do that and then you can take your, your action. there's been so much happening yes. <laughs> I oh. don't want to be noticed, so if I could do this as stealthily as possible, but it's also pulling <laughs> a sword free from someone's back. Ooh, I will could it be? Wait, could it be when he had his little vision? Uh, that was a held action. I think, okay. I'll say you can try this time. Okay. He will not notice you. Okay. Uh, this for the held action. Got that's, it. That's baller. Okay. Um, uh, so... Yeah, uh, you're going to have to give me, if you're going to want to pull it out, you're going to have to give me a DC 20 strength check. DC 20? Strength? Oh, strength. bastard. You climb up onto his back. Uh, you are on his back. Uh, all of the swords are sort of missing right now, uh, besides a couple of other ones. And you climb up on his back and you uh, grab this uh, glass sword that has little shadows coming off of it. As soon as you grab this sword, you look off... Something flickers at this oh, uh, shit. at the side of your vision, yeah. and you see this giant mirror in the center of the room. It's this giant onyx black slab that goes up almost about like fifty feet. If I um, take my hands off the sword, does it disappear? It good disappears. Fuck yes. Okay, cool. It's not it means top. yeah. It means yeah. that uh, you can deduce that. Like when you're holding this, or you can see his mirror. You can see the mirror. Um, okay. Uh, well, then I'm just gonna try and pull it free. Okay. Uh, 17 is the first one. Not enough. What? What? What is the bonus you have to strength? A plus one, homie. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you got her all 19 or above. Yeah. So I'm assuming you did, did not, not happen, my friend. Okay. So yeah, you go to pull this thing, and it, it is stuck in there. Uh, and you feel as if it's connected to more than just his body. You don't know how okay. you know that, um, but you, it is stuck in there. Um, and I would say, Vetra, from your point of view, you just see the sword sort of wiggle uh, because he is invisible. And um, I'm like, oh God, what is he about to do? <laughs> can, can I take, like, can I just do one little can trip? Uh, yeah, yeah, out? I think so. Okay, I'm going to send... Well, I guess this will kill my invisibility. That's okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to send a message to uh, Betra. Okay. You know, uh, Dull appears in your mind. We, we need, need to, to switch. switch. <laughs> I'm going to make, make him run. run. There's, There's a sword, sword on his, on his back. back. It's, it's the, the key, key to Tom. Tom. Keep, Keep me alive, alive please. 
and yeah, I, I so materialize onto his back, yeah. Uh, and then I'll use my movement, uh, if I can, if you'll let me, uh, to sort of roll off the back of his head so that I land sort of three-point stance in front of Kanan. Um, and my preparation is to get his attention and then run for the first mirror that I now know I can jump through and teleport across. So uh, I will say yeah. uh, for tactical things, since you're like moving out, he could get an opportunity attack. But since he was sort of like briefly just... incapacitated and you were just invisible, I'll say that you can get, you can do that, draw his attention. Beautiful. Um, uh, I will say you cannot go through a mirror yet because you've yeah. done a lot so far. But uh, yes, you do sort of roll off the front of him and run uh, up. And uh, he's going to take a legendary action at the end of your turn. Mm -hmm. Veteran Doll, can you give me another deck saving throw? Sure can. 21. I have a 23. Okay, all right. So only half. Um, and I guess, uh, again, with Dull. Ah. And I am raging now. So. Oh, yes. Amazing. So half of half. Uh, so that's 14, so 7, so half of 7, so a, a, a 3. Take 3 slashing damage. As you see, uh, he sees you roll off his back, and he's like, Ugh! sort of shakes off uh, the early little vision. He's like, dragons! And then all of the swords in the room sort of come back, and slam right into back into his back. And he, ah, sort of a groans, a screams, uh, but you both dodge all the swords as they're flying back into his back. Um, and uh, that was his uh, legendary. So then now it is uh, Winnie's turn. You are falling through the air. You have gone, let's say, 50 feet all uh, so far. Just as all the glass is sort of falling next to you. And you see Theophinia falling as well. And the ground is getting very, very close. You did it, Theo. Good job. I never let either one of us fall like this. And as a reaction, because they're both still falling, we see threads manifest out of the sky and shoot down to grab both of them, connecting to the different articulation points of their body. And those threads go taut and they begin to lower uh, Theo and Winnie down towards the ground, but at a controlled and safe um, speed. So at the end of uh, Winnie's next turn, she'll hit the ground on her feet. Um, okay. And that extends out to Theo as well. So and... it just starts to slow the fall. Uh, all the glass falls past you and you begin to fall slowly. And as Winnie is falling, uh, she'll reach to her side and she'll begin to strap her shield onto her arm. All right. Anything else Let's you'd get like ready to do? for the next part? Nope. That's okay. it. Um, and next turn. Uh, well, actually, we're going to take another little legendary action after Winnie. Um, and I think the person that is closest is still Vetra because Dole ran away. Vetra, uh, I, uh, we're going to have a little athletics contest. Two of us need to beat a 21. 25. All right. Uh, so you see uh, uh, Kanan uh, go up and like grab, tries to grab you, and it's just the sort of like struggle match, and then you push him back, uh, and he does not. He's not able to do what he was trying to do. Thank God for rage. <laughs> and now um, it is uh, his turn officially. Uh, gets his legendary actions back, and I'll roll a luck check to see who he goes after. Because Dull, you did try to draw his attention, uh, but there was no necessarily role given. So I'll say, uh, if we succeed this luck roll, he'll go after you. He turns towards Vetra to still remain attacking her. Um, and he is again going to try these three attacks. Miss. Miss. Miss, holy fuck. Fuck yeah. And just uh, enraged, just, rah, 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 and you're just dodging, parrying, blocking these things out of the way. He's like, you will not kill my friends. And uh, just barreling down. Um, and then he's gonna use a bonus action. And you give me another wisdom save. You have to beat a 13. 
Nope. Okay, so he looks as you're holding the swords. His face gets really close. He's like, I'm gonna kill you. And you see the red, and it just it, it brings this fear over you. You are not in the fear, in the like the uh, afraid or fear condition, uh, but you have disadvantage on your next attack. Just your okay. first, your next attack. Uh, so he just stares at you. The blood falls onto your face as he's sort of screaming at you. And uh, that is his turn. Um, mm-hmm. Vetra. At least mechanically wise, all you have to do is grapple him and then you can do a strength. But your grapple will be a disadvantage because of that ability you just used. If I do it reckless, will it be... Ooh, that would, that would definitely cancel it out. Uh, is that what you want to try? Yeah, I will try. And I got a 13 for my athletics. Oh, 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 dang. You got real lucky there, son. Woo! Because <laughs> uh, he, got, he got a plus 10 to his athletics, and he rolled a 2. I think, like, the attacks that he was swinging at me with, I didn't even have time to, like, push and, and parry them away. I just put up my shield, and he was, like, hammering me down. Like, I was going down to one knee with my just my shield keeping me up. And then once they finally, like, stopped, and there was just a brief moment, I just moved my shield around, stood up, and kind of used my shield to hook onto him and try to reach up and grab onto the, the sword. Awesome. So, yes, you are grappling Kanan. Uh, you f- sort of have to uh, move yourself to avoid the swords in his back. And you can grab onto this long sword and pull it out. You're going to have to give me a DC 20 strength check. Strength check. Yes. I have advantage. What is the bonus you have to your strength? My strength bonus is plus three. Okay. I got a 20 total. As you grab this long sword and you pull it from Kanan's back, he stumbles forward and you feel another, you see this very strange cycle of visions. It was before the Dragon War and you see leaders of the different four kingdoms. You see one of them is a tyrant, one of them is a despot. And you see the heroes coming in and having to take them down, having to remove them. And you see them all getting so tired of having to do this over and over and over and saving these people, reinstating a different leader. It ended up being bad, being worse, being awful. The Dragon War came. Heroes sort of took charge. And then as the war ended, you see that cycle is broken. As you see the heroes taking charge or being advisors. And you see see this sort of peace starting to establish maybe it hasn't been in not long enough time but you see the heroes starting to relax you pull this sword from the back and then now you can see in the center of this room this giant onyx black slab this polished rock face that goes up about 30 feet uh only you can see it because you are holding this right now um but uh it see it looks like it's underneath like a very thin thin like uh, blanket or something like that uh, while you're holding it so it's like a little bit shimmery uh, but give me an arcana check uh, it's gonna be lower than it was with dolls that's fitting I got a natural one <laughs> okay all right uh, yeah um, but it seems as if you can see <laughs> it while you're winning. holding it I'm like what the fuck is this um, we um, need the magic but yeah, people. Yeah, but you We're you pulled dumb. it. You pulled you <laughs> pulled it. I mean, yeah, you guys can do whatever you want. Um, but yeah, you pull this thing out, and you are able to see it. Uh, Kanan stumbles for a second. He looks uh, uh, like something is wrong. Uh, but you see a dull. You see his eyes uh, sort of clear for a second, and then they go back to red. Um, and uh, it's starting to turn around to look at you. Uh, what else would you like to do, Petra? I just say dull <laughs> and just motion to uh to Kanan and that's uh that's my turn. Okay. I will say he's going to take a legendary action. He's going to try to grapple you. I need you to give me a athletics contest with him. Uh, I need to beat a 16. 22. Okay. 
Uh, he tries to grab. He's like, give me that back. Give me that back. Smash him in the face with my shield. <laughs> Go. <laughs> um, and yeah, he's just all up in your face. Um, now Theo's turn. Theo, you are falling, but now you are falling slower. Uh, you are still 50 feet above the ground. You can see shit's happening down there. And what would you like to do? Can I hold my action? Yeah, sure. Uh, what do you want the trigger to be? To um, when I land, or alternatively, if one of them is hit. Actually, I'll go with if one of them is hit. All right, cool. Um, all right, so next turn, back to the top of the round. Dull! Oh, you're muted. I mean, I'm still trying to get his attention here so that Vetra is not getting every bit of this. Um, uh, give me an Arcana check real quick. An 18? Okay. Um, so you're looking at this sword, and you believe when you... Because Vetra is holding it, you cannot see the mirror anymore. Right. Uh, you can surmise that if you... Maybe if you break the sword, it will break the enchantment that is making the mirror invisible. Or uh, you, since since you've been to the center of the room and walked through, you have not walked into the mirror. So it is it is being held somewhere else. Uh, you can guess maybe the ethereal plane, and perhaps breaking this enchantment uh, will bring it back here. Um. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, easy. Um, just break the big sword. Uh, we can do that. Uh, I'm going to look at uh, Kanan uh, and then back up at Vetra and go, uh, uh, we need to put it in him. We need to kill him with it. Break it off inside of his body and, and it'll bring up the mirror, I think. We need to put him out of his misery. And I will cast uh, Dissonant Whispers on King Kanan. Uh, and it's just going to be like a cacophony of noises inside of his head, but it's going to repeat over and over. Uh, this isn't you. You are royalty over and over again. Um, uh, what does he have to do? To... He's got to be a oh, wisdom 16. Okay. He probably will. Ooh, he might. What is his wisdom? Oh, it is only a plus two. He got a 15. He failed. <laughs> uh, in that case, he takes... 10 points of psychic damage. All right. Um, and, and give me a persuasion with that with advantage. 28. Um, so you say that to him in the, the spell that you cast, and uh, he uh, looks uh, like he's in pain. And you see one of his eyes clears of the red, and you can see his pupil. And he looks, and he's like, what? What's happening to me? And it goes back to red. No. Um, but it's just for a moment, you f saw the, the, the King Kanan in there. Oh, we might be able to bring him back, Vetra. <laughs> I'm getting mixed signals here, Dolph. I know, I know, but <laughs> you heard him, right? Listen, I know what I said, but now uh, his eyes, I saw it. Uh, what would you like to do, Dolph? Oh, I'm going to use the bonus action to use Master of Tactics to give uh, Vetra the help action on the next um, attack or roll that they use. They basically have help for their next turn. Um, and then I'm going to run into one of the mirrors uh, okay. to pop up in another portion of the room, hopefully where a big giant undead king is not trying to kill me. Um, give me either an investigation or an athletics check. Oh boy. Or arcana. Whatever. One of those three. I'm going to go with acrobatics. I have a 23. Okay. So yeah, so you uh, uh, as you hit this mirror you feel it's like solidness but then you sort of keep pushing and then you end up uh somewhere else uh if you were going to attack uh kane in this turn you would have a plus two to your uh to that attack uh, it's a sort of like distracting type thing uh, cool. but you pass through this mirror 
end up somewhere else, wherever you Got would it. like to be. Uh, uh, somewhere inside of him so that he still follows, but uh, with enough comfortable distance. All right, so boom, uh, pop to the other side of the room. Um, and when that is done, Del, uh, we'll do another legendary. Uh, this is going to be another athletics contest with Vetra. He wants that sword back. Natural 20. You got a natural 20 mm. as well. Yo. What is your bonus? I have bonus a plus athletics? 7 bonus. He has a plus 10. I'll say that since you both got a nat 20, he gets it from you, but it is not, he did not like put it back in his back. So basically, he has taken it from you, um, but it is not uh, it is not out of your reach. You don't have to do another like thing to pull it out of his back. Uh, so it's just sort of canceling out these nat 20s. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so he just wrenches it from you. <laughs> it's just sort of like a grapple check now? Uh, basically. I mean, it was a grapple to pull it out of her hands. Right. Uh, but yeah, a grapple to uh, pull it back or I don't know, hit it. Um, so, uh, that was his thing, and that was Winnie's turn. You are now, uh, boom, landed on the floor. I think when you so, land, I say, well, I had something for you. And... <laughs> yeah, what, what's, what's the situation down here? Are we, uh, y'all are fighting him, obviously. Do we, are, are we, do, do we have to kill him? King Smash cannons. that, and I just point to the sword. Yeah. More <laughs> dragons. Ha I won't let you kill my friends. We think he can be redeemed. <laughs> she pulls out uh, his divine radiance uh, from her belt. And uh, on the other side of Ederard, uh, looking at Vetra while she swings. And she's going to try and baseball bat and swing through the sword that he has. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so give me an attack on the swordy. Is a 24 to hit. You do not have to give me damage. As you swing your sword, you psh, crash through this glass sword, psh, just like shattering all the shadows <sighs> to sort of dissipate. And then psh, you see this giant onyx uh, uh, black slab of stone mirror uh, just appear in the room, in the middle of the room, and Kanan falls uh, to the floor. Uh, Winnie, when you crash through that sword, you get a little... Uh, a short little vision and you see all of the 13 heroes this seems to be after the dragon war and you see like little portraits of all of them they're sort of like moving and laughing but all of the portraits keep getting farther and farther away from each other and they keep like blinking into darkness uh, just blinking away getting farther and farther until the only one that remains is Tom and he looks very very lonely and he blinks away into darkness i know i'm not necessarily the best at reading things but that seemed this is good easy i'm gonna run over to kanan's body and check his pulse um you ran over and he is breathing and he <sighs> he uh sort of like uh, sort of falls over, sort of rolls over, and you see his eyes are clear, and he's like, Wait, what is, what has happened? It's in me. And you see he is still, like, mutated, has a third arm. He still has these swords in his back. He has these sort of black veins and sort of the strange uh, mutated deformities on his body. He's like, what is, what has happened? Tom got to you before we could. Tom changed you. He made you some sort of guardian to his mirror. We need your help, Kanan. I, I, I remember he, he stabbed me with something. Oh, and he sort of looks at his back. Oh, what, do, what, what has happened? Where, what has happened? How long have I been like this? It's like a dream. I've come did, he, did he stab you with anything besides these swords? Did he stab you with a dagger? Did it look like this? 
And um, Theo holds up her dagger. He looks at it similar, but it was, it was like it was made of white light. Mm. Like it was on fire, but with a ghostly white light. But the shape is similar. And everything felt different after that. <laughs> And you see a red, little bit of red uh, seep into his eyes, but it, uh, it fades away. My mind is not entirely my own. Yeah, I can feel it still in there. Uh, uh, but for now, I have control. And you hear the sounds of swords being unsheathed. And you see nine of the Keepers of the Veil inside of the room mm. swords pointed at Kanan mm. and they are in the room and you hear them say it is your time Lord Kanan and he looks around at them what is that sound you hear it he's looking at them he can see them but it seems like he's hearing something which you're not hearing Kanan what do you want us to tell your people What has happened to them? Please, please, uh, just a, a, li just a little bit of time. He looks at the, uh, the keepers of the veil who are just like slowly moving towards him. There's not enough time, Kanan. They're fighting for you. What do you want your people to know? I, I, I want them to. I do not. I do. I don't care about land, about stones, about buildings. That I care about their lives. They should. Right. Get to safety, whatever that means. My sons, my my wife, my It looks like he's looking at something that isn't there. I didn't know. Tell Tom I'm sorry. <laughs> That's dumb man. It'll be okay when you cross over. I've been to Helen back so many times. It's not as bad as it seems. How do you know? I've I've been there. I've talked to people. Many many of them. Probably people that you knew or fought with. He sort of laughs. <laughs> you magic users always surprise me. I never know what you're going to say. Well, if it's any consolation, I never know what I'm going to say either. <laughs> he Amen. looks at Doll. Do you think we could get them to give me more time? They want to fight. And the keepers are coming closer and closer. Canaan, it, it comes for us all, and more time is how we ended up here in the first place. But to comfort you, it will be like going home. If you close your eyes, and you think about anybody else who's gone before you, or even the people that you want to see 50, 60 years from now, it'll feel cozy. I do not fear death. I fear for the living. I fear for my friends. I will go with you. And the keepers lower their swords. And but he looks around. What will become of Nemeria without me? I was... I was ready to establish a council. I was not. Uh, I was going to step down. If if it, if it survives, please make sure that that happens. There's so many things I'd like to say, but I can't think of any. I just hold out my hand, like, to shake his. 
uh, you see or he grabs it and you see the third arm sort of comes out he's like oh that's new uh, he shakes her hand he's like divine warrior I know you might not care for it but your father would be proud thank you The Knights in the Maria will keep the world safe. Right. We'll do our best. Uh, and he turns, and uh, the one of the keepers of the veil uh, lowers their sword and extends a gentle hand towards Canaan. And you see him stand up straight take their hand and as they turn to walk away they <sighs> turn to mist and you are left with the eight other keepers of the veil um, and you hear them say bring us to him the defiler I kind of stagger over a little bit. Like, whoever is closest to me, I probably bump into them slightly, and I'm holding a pretty bad wound on my side. So in the this very brief state of grace that we have before things might get so much worse, Theo will go to um, one of them after the other um, and... You know, she, when he knows what she's getting from Theo, if Theo dies and um, Vetra, they've never really had to talk to understand, but Theo kind of gestures at the dagger at her hip and she says it was always easier to use it when you were around. So if you want it, when I'm gone, if I'm gone, it's yours. I don't think Vetra has a verbal answer for that. Just nods. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally she goes to to Dull and Theo's so short, but she'll try to stand on like her tippy toes and do that same thing that Dull did f such a long time ago, right before they fought Vigo, where she touches her head to his, and she says. I left a bunch of notes with Mortimer. I kind of told everybody what they get from me, but I was a little bit stuck on what to give to you because I think you have it already. But you don't get to go before me, Dol Ozon, because you gave me your tooth, which means you gave me your life. And according to the fangs, your life is mine now, and I say you don't get to go before me. And if you do, I will haunt you. Or maybe you'll haunt me. One one way or the other. Well, back home, we'd call that mutually assured destruction. I think that we owe it to each other not to die then. And as Dull says this to her, Theo is going to ca cast Enhance Ability on all three of you at the fifth level. So each of you can take back uh, 2d can have 2d6 temporary hit points um it's i nice. will say you can also in this is a moment of respite there's like at least an hour and a half until the things run out you can take a short rest i'll say you can cast this afterwards uh so that you can have that for whatever you're going to do next uh just for just to let you all know okay. okay yeah absolutely so that's nine temporary hit points for everybody nice so you are all standing in this room of mirrors uh, that where the onyx uh, giant mirror is sitting. When the Keepers of the Veil came in and asked you to bring Tom to them, they pointed somewhere else in the castle. Um, but the mirror is still here. I will say this is a good time to do a little flashback. We jump back to before the battle, the preparations of all of this. 
And where do we find uh, Winnie? Winnie is in that divinatory chamber that she had been working on building for the last two years. It's this large iron altar with a place for 1,000 candles. And we find Winnie as she's slotting the 1,000th candle into the altar. Um, and she's waiting on um, kind of um, Theo to bring the last spell component. And then she's um, putting things together in, in a large pool at the top, uh, or in um, not a large pool, but kind of a large dish at the top of the altar. And once everyone is there um, and ready, she'll throw in ichor from the ancient bone, lichen from an old gravestone, and a bit of stardust. And she will cast Contact Planar Being. I reach out to the beings that call themselves the Keeper of the Veil. I wish to speak to your Sovereign of Shades, or or your Warden of Watchers, or your King of your Keepers, or or show me your counsel, but it is time we spoke. And I would say in the normal text of the spell, you have to do a roll, but since you are in this divination room, and you've like basically been making this thing for like two years it just amplifies this spell so that you do not have to roll and i would say there is like this happens in your mind all of your mind since you're in the room all of the candles blow out and then you see in your minds the shadow lands that battlefield that went on goes on until the horizon you see old uh, uh, banisters, uh, armor, uh, skeletons, bones everywhere on this endless wasteland of uh, of a war, which is very familiar to Theo. And then you see this dark tower in the middle of this battlefield. And atop it, not resting on, but floating above it, is a sharp red, glowing red crown that has these uh, points uh, like daggers. Uh, as it sort of slowly circles. And then it's almost as if your vision is grabbed and <laughs> pulled all the way to this tower, this hundred foot tall tower, which is actually not a tower at all. It is this tall being that is hundreds of feet tall, some sort of entity that is in this dark shadow-like cloak that is uh, just very uh, skinny, long, and uh, it is made of a cloak of pure shadow. You cannot see its face, it's nothing but darkness, but it has <sighs> noticed you. And it says, Why have you called me? It is not your time. It's not mine, but it's finally Tom's. Your warriors, your soldiers, whatever they are, they've gathered on the shores of the city of Thane. Come. Join them. Help us make this right. When the time has come for the breaking of the world at the end of ten days, then I will come. When the sun turns red, when the song of ruin is played, and the stars fall, that is when I will Fine, then you stay here. Send some of your soldiers with us. Have them join the fight. What Tom is, is something horrible. Something he has been manufacturing for years. Help tip the scales in our favor. We do not want. We only follow to keep the one law. They will do I hope they'll come and fight. And when he looks at the others, 
I've seen you before, your tower. What do you want with me or my magic or the dagger that I carry? That's... I've, I've been to this realm before a lot of times and it was always through using a dagger a magic dagger do you know someone named Vigo he gave it to me a long time ago I'll pull it out show it this I'm, are you talking about me I'm not a thief. I'm just a Theo. It was a gift, actually. That does not belong in the world of the living. It should not be. Like you should not be. Shameless one, there will be a time you must decide whether you are of the living or of the dead. I turn to the others and I say, what, what do you think? What, 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 what does he mean by that? We followed you to act out the one law. She is neither living nor dead. Must decide or we will take you. Well, and... it's decided. She's living. So thank you. Appreciate it. ends we flash back to the present moment with you all standing inside of that room of mirrors with the onyx mirror towering above you all she said she would be here that it would only be a moment after we destroyed the wheel I don't understand yeah, you know what? She's had plenty of time to get here. It's um, time to give her a bit of a push, I guess. And Winnie will cast Sending, which will successfully reach Veridin if she's on this plane of existence. What do you and say? And Winnie will also kind of write the words the way she does this is it's almost like cursive writing in gold up in the air so everyone can see this we broke the spell wheel it's done you're up where are you wait and you get a message back one word help Where? I, I don't... Fuck. Um, I don't know what to do with that. I don't know where she is. She just said help. Oh, shit. Where is Tom in the castle? Maybe she went directly to Tom. And we've been dicking around in here. Catching her breath. You think she's already in the mirror? Uh, Winnie will cast Locate Object, mm -hmm. um, which you can use to find a person. And she's looking for Veridin. I'm trying to cast, yeah, uh, the the object I'm trying to locate is Veridin. Boom, she's in another part of the castle. We just talked about a distraction before we came in here. But that that was with Helene, not not Veridin. Veridin's and Winnie just points in the to the to the part of the castle where she uh, she can feel where she knows Veridin is. You know that that room is, uh, from the layout that you were given, that is the. The ritual hall like tom's like workshop i don't think we can make an orphan of rue i can't leave that child i won't do it theo's gonna go to go to help do i'm gonna go with theo you do know 
If the mirror is not broken, you cannot hurt Tom. Veridan's been holding him this whole time. We gotta... We gotta break this thing. I just start swinging. Um, then we do a little flashback as you all decide, or as Vetra decides to start to swing at this mirror. Um, we do a little flashback of you all making these little items of power, uh, which was if you have a weapon that has been honed or that has been aged uh, for a long time, uh, a blade that has been sharpened for, uh, for two years straight, it has some sort of magical power, and you know that you had to make these weapons or have them somewhere to be able to damage the mirror at all. What do we see? Theo doesn't have a lot of things that have value. It's not something that she treasures very much by value. So as everybody's gathering the things that mean something or have some kind of magical property, she's almost at a loss for a minute because there are certain things that she cannot put into the cauldron to be able to bat down. She can't put in the bones because those aren't her stories. She can't put in the dagger because they might need it. Um, and she would never put in the fang from Dull. But she has a moment where she remembers that it isn't just bones that she has in the bag. She has a little bell from Vorley that she picked up a long time ago, or it feels like a long time ago. It's only a few days and she takes that out and drops it in and it jingles a little bit as it hits the bottom of the cauldron. Vetra takes the literally the only thing that she has, that she owns from home. Uh, it's just a regular gold coin, but she keeps it separate because it is the the gold coin that she won when the other soldiers she was training with in Tormorgain bet that she couldn't beat them. And she takes that gold coin and drops it in, watches it disappear pretty quickly, and still just stares in. Dull takes uh, from within his uh, sort of uh, doublet um, a piece of parchment that has been sealed with the symbol of the Falks, um, and he uh, he places that without ever opening it, without ever giving symbolism or meaning to its uh, its written correspondence, and places that deeply into it. Um, and then um, he takes uh, a very nice, ornate, uh, black leather uh, cloak, uh, sort of like rain uh, wear almost, that is beautifully uh, kept and has obviously been cared for for a very long time. Uh, but it is the size of a much smaller doll. Um, and there is an embroidered uh almost maker marked uh v that sits at just the collar itself and he unties that and folds it three times and keeps it very nice and tidy and and guides that uh into the cauldron as well years ago when veridin cast that spell that did save almhurst but also doomed it at the same time and made them fear anyone with magic. That same day when Winnie was run out of town by the people, uh, before she could go, vowing to find the person who did this, her moms, Millie and May, packed her a bag. And in it were candles, because her moms are chandlers. And Winnie has one left that was from that pack. And she just drops the candle into the cauldron and it melts so beautifully. I would say you all dip your various items uh, that you're going to use uh, to coat uh, with this, uh, this, these items of importance uh, of aged things and it gives them the ability, whatever items you choose, to be able to uh, destroy and harm legendary and artifact 
magic items. And then we go back to the present moment where Vetra is going to swing this sword. Is that the sword that you coded in the stuff? Uh, yes, does anyone it is. speak Elvish? I do. Uh, as you're walking up to the mirror, you see that it is uh, there is this uh, writing on this mirror. It's called the Eye of Truth. Is what this mirror is called. And I would say as you're walking up, as you're all looking into this mirror, um, right before you, did you coat your sword in it? Is that what you? Yes. Uh, as you're bringing the sword uh, close, you all see slightly different versions of yourselves in the mirror. Everyone is going to describe, for example, we see Vetra, but Winnie, Theo, and Dahl are going to describe what they see Vetra as. Because this is who they truly are. Not who they see, not with all of the insecurities and the doubts and the the hatred, but what they truly see in the mirror. So I, let's start with Vetra. Uh, Winnie, Theo, and Dull, what does Vetra see? Um, I think uh, one major thing is that the war paint that used, uh, used to just adorn her face has now begun to adorn every inch of her body. Any skin that is shown is either tattooed or painted, um, and each is a different stroke and uh, thickness and a color and, and um, depiction of, uh, of memories that have strewn across uh, what she is. And, uh, the closest thing to metals that a skin can wear. When Winnie looks at Betra's eyes, she sees how bright and clever they are. And, and when she looks at just Betra's athletic, strong, powerful body, she sees how capable Betra is, how, how how she uses her body to protect her friends, but also to just move through the world wonderfully and beautifully. Vetra sees herself as Theo sees her, which is incredibly warm and shockingly gentle in a way that you wouldn't expect. Vetra sees herself in the woods protecting Theo, going with her on all of these trips, even though Vetra knew exactly what they were doing and who they were looking for, and that must have caused her pain, but Vetra can see that self-sacrifice in herself and that kindness and that warmth that she shows to others, but pretends not to, and rarely, if ever, shows to herself. And then we see Dull. First is his clothing from the Fox and how every bit of it tells a story and means something and is important in some way. But more importantly, she sees how the man standing there wears those clothes and how he's the one who makes every bit of it important. And he's the one who brought a story to every piece of it. Looking in the mirror, Dole also sees himself as Theo hopes one day they will see each other, which is the stars coming down, but not because the world is ending, but because everyone is at peace and the stars are just falling. And he can see himself as she sees him, which is for the first time that she has some kind of a future. And that that future is is dull. And through all of this, the face looks like there's no emotion, but the longer you start to look at it, the more you can see the, you know, the corners of the eyes kind of squinted from a smile or the laugh lines on the face and the kindness that shines through the eyes that maybe you wouldn't see at first. And we see Theo, Finia. I think at first, um, expecting to see yourself in the mirror, you, at first glance, see who, how you see yourself. So I think at first Theo's very small. And then Theo's energy just starts taking up more and more of the mirror. And 
there's almost like this, not quite glow, but this heart, this soul that just takes over. What Winnie adds is this lovely hunger, a hunger to learn, a hunger for 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 having new experiences, for for trying new things, for not being well, maybe being afraid to fail, but not letting that ever stop her, and and just the absolute overwhelming warmth of her heart and her relentless ability to be kind. For Dull, the depiction of Theo is this um, corona of sunlight that is beaming back behind uh, as if she's standing just on the rim of a horizon. Um, and for the duration of this in entire moment, she's laughing um, harder than she ever has, so much so that her eyes uh, are, are barely open and, and they are just uh, completely at peace and taking these heaving gasping breaths with each new laugh uh, and um, they're so very alive and then we see Winnie Winnie sees herself as Theo sees her which is the center of all of it with these threads these that shoot out from from every joint from every part of her and twist around each of the rest of us and even as we drift apart her magic and that golden light that surrounds her just brings us back slowly but it brings us back she's uh standing in her new kingdom her new place her new world and um she is uh, backed by all of these people many of them most of them the younger generation and um uh, there are books in each of their hands uh, especially hers and there is this uh, awareness of fulfillment across each of their faces And all of the, like, glowing threads all around, they start to, like, center in on one point. It's her heart. And it's coming from her heart. It's not going to her heart. And the most noticeable thing is just the slight little twinkle in the eye that we realize is a reflection of the stars from that roof. And as Betra's blade is flying towards this mirror, Betra, you feel a resistance as before the uh, the blade has even gotten close to the mirror, like some sort of barrier. But then this the like a light sheen uh, from the coating of the blade, you see it shine and cut through like it was nothing, and crash through this mirror, and you see it just start to crumble and boom, falls down, and you feel, again, another sort of, a, uh, a sort of shock wave, uh, smaller this time. And as the dust sort of clears, the mirror is broken. Let's go. It's that way. And uh, Winnie will uh, reach out and grab Vetra's hand and then begin to run. As you are all running through this castle, you realize that these, these are the last moments that you have before encountering whatever it is that Tom has waiting for you. As they're running, squeezing Vetra's hand, when he laughs, I, I, you promised, but I knew you'd take it the fuck off. Can we talk about this later? I just... Sure. 
you know what? Yeah, because there's going to be a later. We're going to have lots of laters. And as you're running uh, through the castle, uh, you see uh, running up uh, uh, some of the other uh, hallways, you see Steward Buckland charging through the hallways uh, with all of uh, the Numerian soldiers. And you see, though most of the traps, all of the traps have been disabled, there are still things in the castle that have sort of been activated now. Um, Tom has planned. And you see animated suits of armor, uh, these sort of statues coming up, and you see all of these soldiers just like, ah, just like slashing at them, uh, taking them out, uh, and you see, um, uh, you see Captain Ulrich Steins uh, pushing uh, back one of these uh, statues. Uh, you see Dylan crash through what seemed to be like a glass golem. Uh, it's like a little mirror, he's like, crashes through, he's like, all right, they get out of the way! And they just, uh, taking him out, uh, uh, Nick Demus Lockwood is not here, uh, <laughs> neither is Bisk, um, but you see the Lion's Guard, um, and uh, you can hear the cries of the Griffins as they are circling around, and as you reach the last uh, little staircase that seems to be leading up towards the room where Tom is, you see a bunch of these animated suits of armor and other people coming this way, and you see Stuart Buckland be like, go on! I'll, I'll hold them off. Man this way! And then they charge off towards them to buy you all some time. But flanking you all are still these uh, uh, these undead knights, the Keepers of the Veil, as they sort of uh, silently sort of glide next to you as you are leading them towards this. And as you finally, uh, you reach a pair of doors. And as the doors fly wide, boom, boom, it reveals a room in front of you. And there's, you see many, many things at front. There's five circles in the center of this room. Uh, there is a northern, eastern, uh, southern, western circle, and then they circle in the middle. They seem to be some sort of ritualistic circles drawn in this room. There is four glass golems. They look like panes of glass, um, but they are like humanoid shaped and they're standing there waiting. And you see Helene standing there, the half orc mother standing next to the uh, glass golems. Um, you see also these, there's two stacks of these, uh, it almost looks like, uh, like bookcases, but they're just stacks of all of these little crystal balls that just sort of line the walls. In the middle, there is this floating uh, ball of light that, you know, those uh, balls that have like the little spinning uh, like rings that sort of make up the ball. Uh, they have these uh, various rings of all of these runes and spells, and they're all circling around. And in the center of the rune is Baradin, who is trapped. And it looks like she is trying, she's concentrating very hard, and there is something that is slowly being pulled towards her, and it is a dagger that looks like it is made of this white ghostly light, and it looks like it is being pulled, and is like, you actually, as you come into the room, you hear a psh of a breaking of one of her barriers, and it gets a little bit closer. And you see all of these things at once, and you step through the threshold, and you feel sort of like a wave kind of go over you, and then the knights cannot go through whatever this is. You look down at your necklaces and realize that is why you are able to enter inside of this little bubble, this aura that is in this room. And you see in the reflection of one of the glass golems, you see Tom. You see Tomareth Ivaris Jean Abacus, first wizard, of the Academy, Keeper of the Secret Flame, Inventor of the Counting Machine. And he is a very old man who has a long, long blue robes and uh, they, sh they sort of look like they have like stars on them or constellations. Some of them are seem to be even moving. And he has long white hair, a long white beard. It's a very straight and well manicured, uh, uh, sort of wild little white eyebrows and uh, eyes with a little bit of a green tint somewhere in the back of his eyes. Um, and he says, Ah, well, yes. Welcome, welcome. I will say that I uh, 
would be angry at you if I weren't so impressed. It is not every day that, well, adventurers could not only enter my castle unannounced, sneak through all of my traps, and destroy my spell wheel and my mirror, which I am rather peeved about. That was given to me by a very special friend. And defeat Canaan. That is something to be. That is some feat to be admired, I should say. Well, it's not every day you die, so we wanted to make it special for you. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. But I am curious. I would love to know how you did all of this. It is very, very interesting. Dull, you see your mother standing there behind one of these glass golems. She goes like this. She moves her finger in a circular motion, which you know, you know to mean keep him talking. Got and it. she starts to step back into the room. Okay. Uh, it was simple, uh, really. Uh, you're not nearly as smart as you think. Uh, and with enough time, preparation, and people you care about, um, well, anything can be accomplished, even killing some old fool. Well, yes, yes. I, you are very astute. I had so much hope for you, doll. You are very, very bright. But I would, I would, I'm very curious about the, the details, you see, because the details are very important. Would you mind sharing with me, let's see, how you learned exactly what I was doing? Or perhaps, uh, if you don't mind, sharing a little bit of details about how you entered it. I'm very curious. Let's see. Well, if you... I'm... How, how about this? I know that sharing this information does not come freely. If you share with me, I'll share with you. I'm I'm going to quote an old, I'm not sure if he's a friend exactly, but are you willing to give us six gold? Because if you do, then we'll talk to you. <laughs> he smiles. You are very young, but you are also very impressive. You, you've accomplished so very much being created from nothing and achieving a lot is very I, impressive. I didn't really do any of it. I'm still very oh. worried about my heart exploding, so I'm not... I, I... I... They did all the work. I did... I did nothing. Uh, can you give me a deception real quick? I absolutely fucking can, Adam. Um, I would say you can do it with advantage. Um... I might not uh, need it. Because it was supposed to be impossible to undo. Yes, so. <laughs> exactly. That's why I'm like, oh, boy. Uh, oh. He's a plus six to his insight. Okay. That is a 24, baby. Good. He got Ooh. a 21. Um, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> is this the first time Theo has successfully lied about anything? Hell ever? yes. <laughs> I think so. Um, yeah. um, he's like, ah, yes. Uh, Though it seems disturbing, he has a very kind face. He says, ah, yes, I terrible regret. And well, as I see now, it unfortunately was not enough, but perhaps we can still put that behind us. You all are very, very talented. All of you individually. Winnie, the ah, brightest mind that I've ever seen. And Vetra, very strong-headed and very set in your ways. A, su a hero of some feat. You are all very good heroes, and I believe after explaining myself, perhaps we might be able to work together. But before that happens, I would be love to uh, be entertained by how exactly you learned about all this. I, I would love to hear your theory. So it were. Vetra is looking over, her, like, around at Dull and Winnie, like, why the fuck are we talking to this guy? But <laughs> has realized that nobody has done anything to attack yet, so is holding off, but it's like... Uh, if I get that look from Vetra, I am gonna use a cantrip to... Mm, no, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, but just... 
Okay. Dutch was following your lead. At first sign of anything, I am attacking with all my might. I'll say I'll say to show you some progress. Helene has moved to the middle of the room. Okay. Um, and it looks like she's going to grab something. It doesn't look like anything's there, but she's going to grab something, but is keeping a very close eye because again, the reflection of Tom is in this glass golem. You do not see Tom in this room. Uh, just to reiterate, there's four glass columns. There's also some piles of glass that are a little bit farther back in the room. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, so you see Helene is doing something back there. Um, what do you say? Well, I, I guess the question truly is what you want to know first. Well, how did it all start? It seemed as if with the incident at Daramid that well, we were all on the same side. Well, everything that we went through with Vigo started us thinking down a road, you know? We started to follow a train of thought. There's no way that just Vigo was the only one messing around with things that went down in Dairy Meat, right? There's no way that only one of the great heroes would be that foolish. So we thought, well, who else would think themselves so powerful as to betray every god in existence? And Tom, my love, you were the first one on our list. Very, very clever. Very clever. Yes. Well, I believe so. It did start with Vigo then. Started with you and Vigo? Sure. As soon as you froze time and stepped out of nowhere. I knew something was amiss once Kanan sent you all to investigate uh, the Lady Orspine. I knew that would lead to something, but it was still quite a surprise when you came up with so much on your own. Were you close to her, Tom? Who? The Lady Orspine. Morley. They were all my friends at some time, but I would say, of all of my friends, not especially close, no. Do you have a memory of her? I would. I would. Yes. Does that memory overpower the moment that you took her life and her form, changed her body? I suppose it has come to my part in all of this, then. <laughs> I would like you all to understand did not begin out of malice. Let's start at the beginning. I would like to, uh, I like to think of myself as a more an expert in the divination school of magic, you see. And he gestures towards all of these uh, crystal balls hanging in this room. You see, it started off at the end of the Dragon War as it was quite a surprise when all of this happened, the dragons out of nowhere, it was, we were nearly on our back leg trying to uh, save all of humanity. It was uh, very close. And so at the end, I decided to look for the next conflict. I'll show you. And you see his, his uh, uh, personage disappears in the glass golem, and then you see an image, and it looks like a golden spider web. And it looks like a golden spider web, um, and it sort of zooms out. And then you see a single strand holding up the spider web, and just darkness all around uh, the spider web as none of the little webs or strands can continue, and only this one string is holding onto the web. This is the path that you could take. The paths that the world can take. You see, div divination in very small increments, a day, a week or so, it is very difficult to, to uh, divine exactly what would happen because it's on a small scale. But if you look back, if you look further, hundreds of years, thousands of years, you see a clearer pattern. You see these thick, these thick webs are much more likely to happen. But this and you see the darkness around the web. That is something different. And he sort of zooms in on the one strand. 
This is the only strand, the only way to avoid whatever it is that that is. It would not be in my lifetime. What a thousand years, hundreds of years, but it is a very small chance, a slim chance, the world would avoid ending. Not, not, not this. And sort of like gestures outside. Not this. The end of all things. Beginning, the end, future, now, afterlife. All of it is gone. So I foresaw this and worked towards avoiding it. You see, the only way to avoid to follow that strand is if the heroes are there. Very specific heroes. And unfortunately, all of them are mortal. We would not survive this long of time. The cycles being what they are, with different leaders, with the world reacting differently, magic people being born, cycles as well. It is nearly impossible that they would line up and then everything would be gone. And so I worked towards it, you see, mortality. It was difficult, but that is what I tried to do. And that sort of vision disappears and you see Tom back inside of the mirror. It was a difficult path. One's friends, but they are the truest of heroes. It was the only way. I'm so tired of those words. Yes. Is that all? Or you have more? Or you have more of uh, what chessboard you're setting us on? I'm so tired of this. Oh, please, please, t tell, tell me more. More of what? Show your work. I don't need oh, to. Oh, no. Um, and I would say he's sort of sitting, uh, uh, like, l looking at you all patiently. He's like, I think you realize. He looks at you, Winnie. I think you realize what could be at stake here. I've worked the stars it out are removed from times. the sky, perhaps? What was that? The, the stars are removed from the sky, perhaps. That old tale. <laughs> I believe this is something else. And you see a little bit of a green glow behind his eyes. And as that happens, you see Helene pull out something and she breaks it. And then you see uh, a couple of new things appear in the room. <laughs> These four little platforms appear in the room. There's one above the northern circle, eastern, southern, western circle, and they have little tiny floating steps up to them. And you see chains that are connected from these floating platforms to the big uh, a circle where uh, Baradin is being held. These seem like link points. And you see these uh, like ethereal chains coming from uh, the ball and then becoming physical on top of these platforms. And then uh, you hear Tom say, Oh, Helene, it all makes sense. And he raises his hand and he casts a spell. Kind of spell. Give me a roll. You need to roll a uh, 19 or uh, above. 21. Uh, you see uh, the glass golem raise its hand, sort of mimicking uh, Tom's uh, a, a gesture and you see a green spell start to fly out at her. This isn't the first time Winnie's counterspelled a ninth level spell. The first time it almost burned her hand a little bit, but this time Winnie knows what she's expecting. That green burst of energy instead begins to bend around towards Winnie and it instead dissipates into those golden threads. She grabs them and then begins to spin around, clearly, getting ready to turn it back and cast a spell of her own. 
<laughs> and you'd like uh, knock the spell out of the air and Tom turns toward you and like, very clever. I suppose we should probably start then. Yeah, first sign of anything, I'm, I'm going. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. How many stories you want it to be? Less than 40. Two. Two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you'll permit it, uh, Whitney, or Whitney. Winnie. Winnie. Be <laughs> <laughs> Winnie's long lost oh, sister just. Finales are weird. Um, <laughs> I don't like that. Okay. I don't even know how to describe that face. <laughs> I will. I do want to tell you the oh. other things. Uh, what would have happened? So if you oh, just would have, if you would have hit it exactly, your HP max would have been decreased by twenty. Uh, if you got twenty-five or under, it would have been decreased it by thirty, and your con score would have been by, went down by two. Uh, twenty-four or less. Uh, your HP would have been halved and uh, reduce your score, your con score by four, 15 or below the spell triggers, you're dead. 